Hello, everyone, and welcome back. So we were discussing the, the Delta Lake uh, in, in our last video. So in this video, we're going to see now the demo. And let me start to show you the, the existing data set directory. So uh, if you remember, I told you that uh, we are going to load this data. It is the airline data, which contain the information uh, about the airline, uh, aircraft, which are traveling from one destination to, to another. And the data set itself is quite big. So now you can see we have almost uh, 1000 files and all the files are quite big. So all together, if we try to load the whole data set, it's going, not going to work with this single node uh, cluster. So DataBrick is small. They are, they are uh, giving us the, the sample data set, but obviously you can't do everything with, with the single node, right? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show a technique where you can load some part of the uh, the files. So what we are going to do, we are actually uh, providing the the wild character uh, at the at the last position. So what it's going to do, it's going to read all the file that has these first uh, four, five, and nine character picks, and then the last character can be anything. So it actually read the first ten file. We start from zero. Uh, so the first one will be zero 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 five zero. Then the next one is four zero one. Then four zero two, all the way till four zero nine. Because as soon as the it has changed to to one, uh, it will uh, fill the condition because uh, the criteria which we are providing should have the four zero. And I can show you the file. So you can see in, in here, we have these fi uh, nine files that you can see that we are going to read as part of this demo. All right, so now one thing we need to uh, now add, because obviously the, the files are going to be read from multiple files. So we need to define the schema. Otherwise the schema behavior is going to be, if we uh, try to infer schema automatically, you're gonna see some really funny uh, behavior from, from the, from the uh, database perspective. So it's better to, to design the schema. And obviously that's a good practice that we can define the schema and use that schema while we are uh, uh, while we are uh, 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 loading the data, so it can attach to the schema. And, that, and on the other hand, it literally give us the opportunity to to define a proper schema, and then we load to see whether it's going to to uh, to load uh, completely or, or or not. And by the way, we have uh, other technique as well. If we feel that, okay, this schema allocation is going to be hard because we are expecting some errors or some, uh, you know, uh, dirty data. So then we can use other technique to first clean the data and then load it into our uh, predefined schema. So we're going to see it in, in, in future. But now you can see I have all these fields which are showing me the the, the attributes of, of uh, an aircraft, which is traveling from uh, one airport to another. And now now I'm going to load the 10 files into, into, the, uh, uh, into these attributes. And then the data frame is going to be constructed based, based on, on all that metadata and store the, the, the these 10 files uh, information within it. So let's go and now run that one. So let's see if we can define the schema schema you can define by struct type that that's the class which is available and it has the the object that you can actually call call struct field and you can provide three parameter which is obviously the first one is going to be uh, a column name and then we have the integer type and the last one is going to whether it's going to be a null or not all right, so it looks fine. Uh, didn't give me any error. Now, what I'm going to do, all I need to do, rest is same. So uh, you can see there are only two changes. First, I need to switch off the infer schema option because I don't want data bricks to, to allocate the data types automatically. And I'm attaching my schema. So we have a keyword schema, which is part of this spark.read uh, object. So we can attach our schema. And then what we can uh, do, we can provide our schema variable that we have defined in the, in the previous cell. Now, in this CSV, because we are reading all the data from CSV files, so you can see all the, I have put the full path, the data brick file system path, and then at the end, like I mentioned, the, the first nine characters are going to be fixed in the file, and then the last character is going to be anything. So it will read the first nine files. All right. So let's run this one and we'll see how it goes. 
hopefully it won't take much time. Then it's pretty cool. Like it has uh, uh, executed in 5.24 seconds. And now I'm going to just show you as a sense step. Let's see how the data looks like. I'm just getting the first five uh, records. Yeah, so you can see that's what I mentioned that we have all the file uh, flight related data that where it is flying, what uh, where it is heading to. So origin, destination, depart delay, arrival delay, right? So you can see it's departed delay. We have flags and obviously we have date and time. Now to do a little bit further uh, EDA exploratory data analysis, what I'm going to do. So schema, we have because a schema is irrelevant now because we already assigned the schema. I'm just going to create a view on top of the data frame because I just want to run a couple of queries just to check the, or just to take a sense of the data from the analytical perspective. So let me just see. Let me just see if I can get the the, the unique value of, of the year. By the way, you can see it. Uh, I'm providing a wrong column name. So I'm expecting the, the error into, into my data frame. Now this is funny in what I can do. Let me see. I think oh, because it is uh it is treating it as a as a constant, not a column name. So that's why it's just providing it as a value. So the query itself is uh, correct. It has the the logical error, not the, the syntax error. Anyway, what I'm going to do let's see what we're gonna get now. Because we want to see the 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 distinct values of the year column that how many years data we have available into, into our uh, our table. All right, so you can see we have two two uh, years worth of data into into uh, into my data frame and uh, into my view that have created on my data uh, uh, frame. Now I'm just going to now do a quick summary of, of the, the number of records. So I want to see the breakdown by, by year and month. And these are the activities we normally do as part of our data analysis activity, just to get the sense of, of the, the data. We use different attributes combination to, to generate the summary, uh, to, to try to understand what the data is trying to, uh, to communicate. All right, so we have, I think we have 12 months, two years uh, full worth of data and I can see in here. Yeah, so you can see, I can sort it out because I think at this stage it is not making much sense. And so I need to sort it out by year, uh, by year and month. This keyboard. So let's run this and now we're gonna see uh, how many uh, uh, records. And you know, while we are running this query, I'm just going to change this query and I'm going to see the total number of records which are sitting into my data frame. I don't need limit clause for, for this operation. So the you can see the data set is pretty big. We, I think we have uh, six million records in in my in my data frame, uh, and you can see the performance that with single cluster uh, node cluster, the the data break instance is behaving really well. The way it is handling, uh, trust me, if you have the similar thing in into your SQL Server instance, obviously it's going to be a very different story. We need to index if we want to get similar kind of uh, performance. But now have a look because there is a, a optimizer which is running behind automatically and it is assuring the 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 uh, the queries which we are running against our data frame are optimized and returning us result in a in a very very efficient manner 
All right, so that's all good from the runner perspective. Now, I think I don't need to run this cell, but just from the completion perspective, I'm just looking from, from the from the total breakdown by is arrival delayed or is departure delayed that how many uh, uh, combination or uh, what's the stats from, from these two attribute perspective is because uh, just imagine that from the business perspective, it might convey some story that, okay, some flight they have the, the longer delays or some flight they have uh, the shorter delays. So we can calculate that, right? And obviously the number of delays uh, uh, in arrival and departure, they are also telling us the stories. Okay, and I can extend this. Uh, I can extend this analysis. Analysis if I add more and more attributes. Now, so if you remember my last uh, uh, couple of videos, I told you that if I want to, uh, if I want to get a help on some uh, file system uh, command, I can use the 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 uh, dvutils.fs.help, which provide me the uh, uh, the the quick help about those commands. Obviously, they are they are uh, helping us to interact with the with the underlying operating system of of the cluster. So what I'm going to do because I have created a new directory. You can see I have that uh, A-line uh, Delta directory available. I'm not going to touch the original data set. What I'm going to do, I'm going to remove all the files from, from this directory, which I have created by myself. And then I'm going to copy all the files into, into, uh, into this directory. So it's going to actually remove this directory. We're going to see, and then we load it uh, uh, again. So uh, RM is pretty simple. It removes all the directory, subdirectory, if you provide uh, the second parameter as true. True means it's do it recursively, like it delete all the underneath level of, of, the, of the directory hierarchy. So let's run it. And then I'm just going to... Uh, uh, so it's, it's returning false, so that means there is nothing available at the moment. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to create the directory. So if the command returns you true, that means it has done the work successfully. If it is uh, returning false, that means there is uh, 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 there is failure or uh, uh, the operation uh, uh, is not running as per the expectation. Now, just a quick uh, check. I'm going to now do ls of the same directory just to show you. So you can see we only have uh, okay as a written there. Okay, the directory has presented, but we don't have any data. Now what I'm going to do because I already have my data frame ready, I'm now going to save it in the in the delta format. And by the way, guys, uh, as soon as you provide uh, delta in the in the format, it will indicate to to the uh, to. Uh, to data bricks that okay this table is going to be created as a uh, as a as a uh, delta uh, lake uh, uh, oh, sorry as a delta table or the that part of the lake is going to be treated as a as a delta lake because once we save it uh, what's going to happen is going to create a bunch of files based on our uh, our data frame right but all those files are uh, are subject to be modifiable uh, because they are part of the delta lake not the data Lake, right so keep that in mind whenever you save something uh, with the format of delta it will indicate the the underlying uh, 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 cluster or or engine uh, uh, that okay now whatever you are saving it is subject to be modifiable right so now let's go and save it I just uh, wait for, for this command to be finished. Hopefully it won't take much time. Uh, by the way, we have uh, six, uh, 6 million plus record. So obviously with single load cluster, it might take a small time, but not that significant. But I'm not going to hold you back. I'll, I'll be back as soon as it's uh, finished its uh, execution. All right, guys, so you can see the file has been saved and I'm, I'm going to check my directory again. So what I'm going to do, let me just run this command again. So now you can see, yeah, we are getting now a bunch of records. Yeah, 
So previously it was just showing me the, the empty folder, but now you can see we have a lot of files uh, and you can see they are all, uh, in, in the in the, uh, in the the parquet format. So in, in, in uh, on a side note, we have converted CSV into, into parquet, right? So, which is really good. I'm not going towards the snappy uh, 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 command uh, uh, from the compression perspective, but that, that's all looking quite uh, promising. Right. So now, what uh, obviously the the the, uh, the remaining part is to actually load it back into uh, into into our data frame and then use it. Right. So uh, how we are going to do it? Instead of creating the data frame, we are going to create a table. So now I'm actually creating a, 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 a delta table based on uh, the this file structure that has been uh, uh, created from the data modification perspective. All right. So. I'm calling my table is a line delta table. You can use any convention. Uh, and I'm just checking if the table already ex exists, just drop it because what I'm going to do now, I have all my files ready in the a line delta table, and I'm going to create that table based on that, right? So create table will allow you to, to create the, uh, the table in the, in the data bricks environment. So let's run it. And now the table has been created just from the uh, counting perspective. If you remember the count, just keep that count in your mind. We have around, and that's why I actually counted 6, uh, 6.4 million, right? So what I'm going to do now, just as a first check, I'm now going to run the count to see how many records we are I'm getting. Okay. And see, we have exactly the same count that we have uh, seen in our data frame. So you can see that how we can create the create the uh, the delta table. And now these table have the 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 property that we can update them or we can delete the record from them, which we're gonna obviously do in the in the next video. Please put any question, any uh, uh, any comment if you want to know further about the data table. Otherwise, I'm gonna see you in the next video with the DML operation or data manipulation operation. Thanks for watching.